We have celebrities on stages who want to make their name great. We come and we clap and we worship and we love on these people. We want to make their name great. We want to build towers so that we will be seen, so our country will be seen, so our people will be seen. But do we care if Jesus is seen? What's happening guys? So we are finally here in Liverpool um, supporting our brother Joe. It's been a real blessing. We've been out here about an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah, how long have you travelled up here? <laughs> we took three hours, <laughs> um, three hours to get here. Um, but look, in this city, there's so many nations coming out to um, get around the Eurovision Song Contest. So we thought it was only right that we come down here and um, support our brother and other brothers and sisters out here um, in the preaching of the gospel. And that's what we're here to do. The gospel being preached, souls being saved, and a real genuine brotherly love and affection um, between the saints. So thank you to everybody who prays. And um, I know you appreciate that as well. That's right. We're just scattering seeds and hoping that people get born again. So please do pray for us and pray for this man. He's doing a great work <laughs> and he's got a great ministry and a great heart for the people. Oh, bless you, man. I appreciate that. And yeah, please do pray for us and pray for these people too, that the Lord's name will be glorified and souls will be saved. God bless you and God keep you. Who else would you add on this list of the most hated men? Someone shout out a suggestion. Putin. Putin? This man said Putin, okay, very good. Anyone else? Who else might you add on this list here? You might add me. I'm a lovely man. Why would you do that to me? Okay, anyone else? Now I've asked you today who are the most hated men, but number six is more hated than all of these people put together. Now we're going to do a bit of a social experiment now because this is going to blow your mind. Everyone now take a look to your left. Everyone now take a look to your right, take a mental picture, everyone is here, there's about 15 of us, because I guarantee that when I turn number six over, I promise you at least one person will walk on by because you cannot stand this person, because you do not want to think about this person. Okay? Are you ready for it? Now, just before I reveal it to you, it was said about this person that he was hated without a reason. So if you do walk on by, just do me a favour, think, what is the reason why I hate this person so much and I don't want to think about him today? Are you ready for it? Okay, surprise, surprise, this man said, I told you people would walk on, but let me prove something. Can you give me just two minutes of your time to tell you about this man? If you can't, then I was right. We're good. What's happening, Liverpool? I hope all is well with you. We are here from Newcastle. Um, my name is Curtis, and I've come down with a few faithful brothers to come and share the gospel. Now, even in Newcastle, we're there a lot, and we come and say we're going to share the gospel with you. Um, you guys, just like Sunderland and just like Birmingham and just like London, have the same reaction. You twist your face. You don't want me here to, to talk about Jesus. There's something that humanity has in common, regardless of your language, regardless of your skin colour, regardless of where you come from, what your family is like, there's something we all have in common. And I'm going to talk about it. But just as a disclaimer, yes, I'm a preacher, we're coming to preach about Jesus, but we're here to answer your questions, we're here to talk to you, we're here to pray with you, we're here um, to communicate about something that is so, so important. And... If you look around here, there's, there's hundreds of people here on what street's this? Church Street. Ironic. Church Street here in Liverpool. And the reason that the city is busy as it is today is because it's Eurovision Song Contest, I believe. Am I right, sir? Eurovision? Thank you. Eurovision Song Contest, semi final, second semi final, or something like that. Um, and we've been here a good few hours. And within those few hours, I've heard more than just Geordie accents and Scouse accents. I've heard so many different lingos, different languages, different ways that people are, different dress senses. I've seen it all. And what a blessing it is. What a blessing that is. And it's all the more today, uh, brother, because of this Eurovision. All of the nations from different places have come here to come and see this show. To come and support their... Are you here for Eurovision? Yeah, what, what country are you supporting? Uh, 
L Liverpool, yeah. Liverpool's a country now, praise God. <laughs> Liverpool's a country. But yeah, so people are here to support um, their area. That guy's supporting the country of Liverpool. Um, but with that said, um, what we see here in the city today, 37 countries are represented here. And I think it's about four, 14 to 17 different languages are going to get spoken here today in the city more than ever. But with that said, when I first got on the mic, people were going, I didn't understand what you're saying. They didn't understand my accent. And a lot of people today, based on different locations and accent, to say, I don't understand what you're saying. Preacher, stop babbling on about Jesus. It sounds like babble. Babble. And that got me thinking. It got me thinking about where does that phrase come from? You're babbling on. When babies talk, we'll call it babbling. When we don't understand what people say, we say you're babbling on. Where did that come from? I'll tell you where it come from. So, I don't know if you're familiar with the story in the Bible. Sorry, mate, I nearly hit you there. But the story in the Bible about when God had enough of people's sin. He had enough. People had rebelled against him. They went their own way. They wanted nothing to do with him. So he flooded the earth. He flooded it. The wrath of God was poured out. He'd been patient. He'd taken his time. And he flooded the earth because we had sinned and rebelled against him. And not long after that, we, God said, right, let's start over. And he said to the people who, who survived from Noah to go out, be fruitful, and multiply once again. But this time, do it right. Because I don't know if you guys know this, right? In fact, I know that many of you don't. You are made in the image of God. Not in the image of monkeys. You are made in the image of God, and you're made to, 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 for his glory. I was in Asda the other day, and over the thing says, oh, what's the meaning of life? The biggest question. The, no, it, it's not really that big a question. It's, it's quite simple. You are made on purpose, for a purpose, for the glory of God. Not for your own greatness, not for your own fame, but for the glory of God, Liverpool. And when we, when we look at that, God says, go out and multiply. Go out and do it right. Go out and fill the world with goodness. No longer do it with sin. No longer do it with rebellion. Just keep my ways. Do it for the glory of God. And he said, go to the ends of the earth and do it. Go to the ends of the earth and multiply. And the people at that time wasn't like Liverpool today. It wasn't like the rest of the world today. They all spoke one language. I don't know what language it was, but we could understand what each other was saying. Communication was easy. And these people were led by a guy called Nimrod. Now Nimrod, apparently he was a warrior. He was strong, he was mighty. And he led the people of God. And it wasn't too long before on their journey to multiply and be fruitful across the world that they came to an open plain. And these people, they decided when they saw this open plain, they saw opportunity. And the sinful, rebellious heart was still there. The sinful, human pride issue was still there, Liverpool. And what they did was, instead of listening to God, they said, whoa, let's stop. Let's build a city. Let's build a place that we can call our own. Let's build some security for ourselves. And in the middle of the city, let's put up a tower that reaches all the way to the heavens. The first skyscraper. Let's build a tower that reaches all the way to the heavens. Why? So that we will be seen as a great people. So that our name would be great. And they would see who we are, what we're about, how intelligent, how powerful, how mighty. And that's what they did. They started working. They made bricks and they made mortar and they put it together. And they started building this city. Brick by brick. Brick by brick. And you know what the problem is, Liverpool? It was rebellion. See, God said, go there, but they say, I'm going here. God said, do it this way. They said, I'm doing it my way. Brother, the, God wasn't happy about it because he had asked them to live for his glory, not their own. To make his name famous, not their own. To be humble, not prideful. And they didn't do it. And they continued to build. They continued to build. And the problem is this. The world wants unity. 
And these people were unified, but they weren't unified in the truth. They weren't unified in love. All of these people had one thing in mind. They wanted to build this city and this tower that reached up to the heavens. They were unified in their rebellion towards the Lord. And God wasn't having it. So God didn't flood the world once again because he promised that he wasn't going to do it. But God said, we're going to sort this out. We're going to sort this issue out. These rebellious people need to be dealt with. The world needs to be populated. And I will not be mocked. So God changed their tongue. One minute they were talking to one another, brother. They, were, they understood what was going on. They could communicate. But the next minute, they were babbling. They couldn't understand the words that were coming out of each other's mouths. It was babble. It meant nothing. The languages had been changed. Just like in the city here today. So the work had to stop because it couldn't continue. They were humbled in an instant. So God left them to it. And they dispersed naturally. So God's sovereign will was done. And these people, they, they abandoned the tower. So what am I saying to you here today? When we look to the Old Testament, it's like a mirror. And that's why a lot of people don't want to look at the Old Testament because it tells us what we're about. It tells us who we are. When we look at the Old Testament, we see a pattern here. And it started in Babel. It started with God's judgment, but then God's mercy. And we see as we go on in the Bible, God's judgment and God's mercy. And God's judgment and God's mercy. And it continues on. And you know what the issue is here at the day of Liverpool? We're still the same. We're still the same. We're still rebellious in nature. We still don't want God. We still want to go our way. We're still full of pride. When God says, look guys, this is the best way for your life. I know it because I made it. I made you together for a purpose to be in relationship with me. But what you want to do is you want to go your way. You don't want to make my name great. You want to live for yourself. All of the people at this place in Babel were unified in rebellion. And what do we see here in, in Liverpool today? What do we see here in the Eurovision Song Contest today? We see the nations come to a place, gathering in a place. Is God going to be glorified at these places? No. But what is going to be glorified is making each and every single country's name great. We have celebrities on stages who want to make their name great. We come and we clap and we worship and we love on these people. We want to make their name great. We want to build towers so that we will be seen, so our country will be seen, so our people will be seen. But do we care if Jesus is seen? We are unified in sin. You want to know what you've got in common with the person from Jamaica or Switzerland? Do you want to know what you've got in common with the person who lies, cheats, or the person who is in sexual immorality? Do you want to know what that is? We're all sinners. And it doesn't matter what language comes out of your mouth. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. We're all sinners and we're in desperate need of a savior. So I say to you today, Liverpool, what tower are you building? What tower are you building to try and reach God? Is it a tower of good behavior? Is it a, a, a tower of false religion? Is it a tower of, well, God is who I say God is? Or whatever it is, you cannot reach God where he is. Back in the day, in the times, they thought the higher the tower they built, the closer to God they could be. And I stand amongst the people here and wherever we stand in the world of a people who are desperate to have a God in their own image, to have a desperate to reach God on their standards, to have a goodness how they want it. But honestly, I stand here a man who can testify to this word being true. And the word of God says this, that you cannot work your way up to heaven. You cannot build your way up to God. But God has reached down in the person of Jesus Christ because whilst we were still sinners, whilst we were going our own way, mocking in rebellion, building our own towers, the Bible says this, that God saw us in our sin. God saw us in our issues, and our problems, and our pride in our rebellion, in our cities. And he reached down. And he continues to call out today. The Bible says that God's name in Jesus Christ is Emmanuel. It means God with us. Not far away, God in the heavens. Please build a tower so I can reach you. Please build a tower so I can be great. But Emmanuel means God with us. And Jesus came down here and he stood amongst people who mocked him 
who hated him, who spat on him, but yet the love and grace and mercy of God, he gave his life. And that's what he did. And that's what he does. And that's the promise. Not only does he free you from the wages of your sin, which are many, not only does he take you not from hell and bring you to himself in heaven, but it's far more than that. He takes you from an enemy of God to a friend of God, from one who was captive to one who was free with an inheritance. And this is the good news. And there's nothing that you can do by your own strength. Trust me, I tried it. I tried it in a world that's looking for joy, peace and happiness. They're looking in all the religions, all the witchcraft, everywhere. But it's in Christ and Christ alone that we are born again and free. So the question is this. Are you born again? Is Jesus Christ your Lord and your Saviour and your friend? Just like Babel, Liverpool, we were rebellious, we were prideful, we tried to do things in our own way. But I testify that the Word of God is true. He calls out to you today wherever you are, that He loves you, He wants to know you. Come to Him today. The nations came to watch men on the stage, but I pray that the nations today will know the love and mercy of God because in heaven, regardless of your skin colour, regardless of your language, all of the nations will sing this song. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth is full of His glory and we will see Him and we will know Him and we will be with Him and there will be no more pain. There will be no more suffering. There will be no more bad knees, sir. There will be none of that. But what there will be will be clarity we will be with our God, and I tell you this, my soul knows it well. My soul knows his goodness well. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. We no longer have to live for the adoration of the world, but we can live for the pleasure of the Father. Liverpool, God bless you. God keep you. May his face shine upon you. Come and know him today. God bless you. Turn into my hotel and I accidentally turned into the tunnel and uh, I'm not from around here so I haven't got any cash on us and I don't know how to get out of this barrier. Right, what you're going to have to do mate, I'll lift the barrier. Aye. And then at the next set of lights you want to do a left. Aye. Follow the one way system down to the bottom, do a left again and you're going to have to come back into the tunnel. Uh, but you're going to have to pay to go back through, so go to the attended lane.